Good morning. Good noon, I guess, is the correct way of saying this. Thank you for participating and sharing in today's Good Friday service, a reverent service, a sober service, where we realize as best as our humanity lets us of the significance of God's love, God's sacrifice, and the love of Jesus. Thank you for joining us today and in the streaming audience from those that are either at work, at home, or wherever you're listening to us from today. Heavenly Father, I invoke the presence of your Holy Spirit. We open our hands, we open our hearts. We're moved to tears and we thank you. In Jesus' name, we devote and dedicate our lives and this service in remembrance of what was done for those of us who could not do it ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Let us take a moment to read the living word of God about the love of God that was given to us by the word made flesh. If you would like to stand in honor of reading the Holy Scripture, feel free. If you would not, that's fine. We are beginning our reading today in John 19, 16 through 24. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the palace of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, 
the King of the Jews. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them. With the undergarment, the only one remaining, the garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will have it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled that said, they divided my cloths among them and cast lots for my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you please remain standing and join with the praise team as they lead us in our, in our songs today of devotion.
You may be seated. In 1550, that would have been about 50 years after Christopher Columbus, a man named John of the Cross, a monk, drew a charcoal sketch of Jesus on the cross from the perspective of God. It was just a rough and rudiment type of drawing, but that drawing then inspired the one that you see on the screen right now. And the one on the screen was painted by Salvador Dali in 1951. If you were to look at the original, if you were to look on Google and look closely, you would see that there's no nails, no crown of thorns, no blood. As Salvador Dali was painting this depiction of the original sketch, God told him not to put the blood, the crown, anything that would distract from the view of seeing Jesus. The prayer and the desire was to show Jesus from an upper view, a distinctive view, the view of God's love for us. Jane Harper, are you in the sanctuary? Jane Harper has a sister, Catherine. She's not with us anymore. Catherine did cross sketch, and with the motivation of Salvador Dali's classic masterpiece, Catherine made a wonderful cross stitch that Jane is now presenting to the church in honor of her sister and as a reminder to us that while we look up at the cross, from our perspective, God looks down upon us. And on that day, he looked down upon the Christ. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the gift of kindness and generosity, the celebration of a life, and the reminder that your view is not our view that you look down on those things that we look up at. And God, we thank you. We thank you for the kindness of Jane Harper's gift to the church. We pray that we put it in a place of reverence that reminds us of your greatest gift, the gift of life. Dear Jesus, your burning love for the world and for us has caused us, caused you to be crucified for us and for your blood to be poured out and shed for us. And in your act of sacrificial love, you opened the door of redemption and salvation for us, our souls, our very being. Dear God, look down upon us gathered here this afternoon in remembrance of the passion of Christ. To do what we could not do for ourselves, we trust your mercy and we accept your loving gift of a new life. Through your blood and the sacrifice of your life, we have received mercy and grace and forgiveness. Acceptance and the most remarkable gift of the Holy Spirit within us. Give to us our daily bread and bless our families. Help the world to see and to turn to your ways in your life. Today, dear God, I pray for peace, for reconciliation and obedience to your ways and a heart that, that wants to serve those in need as you would serve and as you would help. 
Dear God, we are humbled as we realize that you are above all things, that our sins have trampled you like a rose. You've surrendered yourself so that we might have life and have it abundantly, for you are the resurrection and the life. So today, may we be impressed and even overwhelmed by the degree of your love for us in this solemn day, your sacrifice, your suffering. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our second re scripture reading for today is taken from John 19, 25 through 30. Once again, you may stand if you so choose. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, your son. And to the disciple, Here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, he said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. The Amen. word of God for the people of God. And thanks be to God. We remain standing as we sing our hymns for the day, Beneath the Cross of Jesus, and Were You There? shadow of a mighty rock with 
Our third and final scripture reading is taken from John 19, verses 31 through 37. Now it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a, be a special Shabbat, because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath. They asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers, therefore, came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus, and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it was given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, and he testifies so that you also may believe. These things happen so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. The word of God for the people of God. And thanks be to God. You may be seated. Dear God, rid me of myself, as the lyric and the song we sang a few moments ago. Rid us of ourselves, for we belong to you. You be with us in these next few moments especially. In Jesus' name. Golgotha and the crucifixion are necessary parts of the road to Sunday. We read in scripture, we know that Jesus was taken at the bottom of Gethsemane, the bottom of the Mount of Olives, as a prisoner. He surrendered himself to the Roman guard that was accompanying the high priests. And he was taken to the house of the high priest. Annas was the high priest for life. Caiaphas was the appointed successor. And there, Jesus was interrogated and tortured. When we go to Jerusalem a year from now, we're going to stand in the basement dungeon and turn the lights off and see the darkness and the horror that any human being would feel suspended and hung in that place. They had a mock trial. The Sanhedrin and the Pharisees had an official trial condemning Jesus as a heretic, that he was not who he said he was, even though all of scriptures and his life proved him to be the Son of God, the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. He was marched from the house of Caiaphas to Antonio's fortress on the side of the Temple Mount. Two miles, maybe. You'll walk on the cobblestones if you're in Jerusalem with us. There's not an easy walk on a good day, let alone having been beaten, already hanging with your hands above your head in the dungeon. Before Pilate, which would have been the early hours of the morning, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. Pilate wanted nothing to do with this Jewish rabbi. He saw nothing wrong in him. But he also wanted peace with the Jews over whom was part of his provincial responsibility. He had traveled from Caesarea, which is a beautiful palatial grounds along the Sea of the Mediterranean. And he was in what he would call a dump of Jerusalem. He did not want to be there, but he knew he needed to be there for Passover. The town was 
bursting at the seams. Typically 50,000 people swelling to over 300,000 because of Passover. Passover was from Thursday night at 5 o'clock to Friday night at 5 o'clock. And then they slide right into Shabbat, their Sabbath, at 5 o'clock, or sunset. It's really from sun, sunset to sunset is, is, is their day. Pilate sent Jesus back to the palace of Herod, another two miles. Herod Antipas came down from the Galilee area and was hanging out with his cousin, and neither of them wanted anything to do with Jesus. So they sent him back under guard, cuffed and beaten already, to the courts of Pilate. The Bible tells us he was beaten again. He was beaten with a cat of nine tails. With glass and metal in the end, ripping every shred of skin that Jesus had. Put a crown of thorns upon his head, mocking his kingship. They had spikes. As they put him on the cross, they pounded the stri spikes. Excruciating. The passion of Christ depicts a vivid, morbid, horrific scene. There is nothing as bad as a Roman crucifixion, I don't believe. Our stomachs were turned this past year as we've looked at Raymond Floyd and others. Torturous. The news broadcast in our day said, turn your head, keep from children. This might be upsetting. This was so much more. As the scripture said, because Sabbath was coming, they broke the legs of the criminals on either side of Jesus. Why was that important? Because they were supported on the cross by their feet. A little, a little brace supported their feet. With broken legs, they could not lift themselves up to gasp for breath, and they were allowed to suffocate. Jesus was already passed. He already committed himself to God's care. Without breaking a bone, they took a sword, a spear, and rammed it into his abdomen below his ribcage. We as parents would do most anything for the well-being and the future of our children. Even more than we love our children, God loves the world. God loves you. God loves me. God loves us. That day, when they nailed him to the cross, the earth was rocked, never to be the same again. Please remember the purpose of this. It was to defeat the grip of sin of which we find ourselves even today. It was to overcome the power of death, and it was to open the door of life, life eternal, to begin right here, right now. We don't need to wait to die from this world to the next, for the Holy Spirit wishes right in since the day of Pentecost to those who believe. All that because of the cross. Jesus surrendered his life so that he could then overcome the power and the hopeless existence that we sometimes face today. And they certainly faced in the first century. Good Friday is a necessary road to Sunday. Jesus had to surrender himself to the worst that evil could muster so that he could then on Sunday resurrect a new day in a new way. Good Friday cracks the door open that will be flung open with wonder and glory and celebration come Sunday. A familiar hymn is turn your eyes upon Jesus and look full in his wonderful face. I'm thinking of those faces that looked at his face at Golgotha. His mother and aunt and dearest friends. John, the one disciple, the only disciple we have record of having been 
Jesus reminds us and assures us that when we turn our eyes upon him, he has already turned his eyes upon us. We see in the picture that things look different from the upper side. Jesus did not, die, did not die on the cross to punish us or to condemn us. Jesus died on the cross so that we might have a choice one day, that we could choose to live the way that Christ would have us live, as a hybrid with the Holy Spirit imprinted within us, that we would be forgiven, that we'd be loved, and that we would be restored. Again, as we remember the hymn, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, the many eyes that were turned upon Jesus that day, who were they? Can we think of them? Can we think of what their emotions were? God the Father Almighty from above. It's horrific to see any of our loved ones. It's horrific to see any of humanity tortured and beaten. Satan and his minions were rolling their hands, I'm sure, thinking that by killing Jesus, they have killed all prospect, all threat, and all worry, that they were going to reign victorious in the destruction and the death of all of creation. They had no clue what was still to come. The religious leaders and establishment, by denying Jesus, they were conspiring to frustrate. But God used all things for the goodness of God's victory on Sunday. The thousands of visitors that were in Jerusalem Pontius Pilate, what was he thinking? What was he doing? Simon of Cyrene, the man who carried the cross for Jesus along the way because Jesus could no longer stand. He was so beaten. Tradition tells us that Simon's sons, Rufus and Alexander, they went on to be great and significant bishops around 100 A.D., 30 to 40 years after the time of Christ. Simon of Cyrene's sons became bishops promoting, loving, and celebrating the life of Jesus that gave them life and whom their father helped. Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, they went to Pilate to ask for the body. The women at the cross, Mary, 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 five Marys, and we got our Mary right here, Mary Montgomery. Mary, the mother of Jesus, Mary, the wife of Clopas. Clopas was probably Joseph's brother. So it would be an aunt to Jesus. Mary of Magdalene, delivered from seven spirits, seven demons, and the first that will encounter the risen Lord on Sunday. To go from being crucified to being risen. Mary, the mother of James and Joseph. Mother, the, Mary, the mother of the sons of Zebedee. The thieves, the disciples, all those that were there. In closing, I want you to think and know that we are not trapped in the darkness of Golgotha. So please do not dwell there too long. We can now look back and we know with complete understanding of the victory that's to come. That the power of sin and death is, 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 is trumped and beaten down. That the triumph of Jesus and the defeat of Satan is celebrated and will one day be complete. The cross, from our human view, looks wrong, but God's view says the heavenlies above, that the cross was a mighty blow that defeated all of evil, all of sin, and all of Satan and his minions, and opened the door to new life and new hope. But that's not till Sunday. We remember Good Friday. Let's imagine the darkness. Let's imagine the agony. I don't know humanly how that was possible except by the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit that allowed Jesus to endure. Allowed Jesus to quote the Psalms as good Hebrew boys were taught to do at times of suffering until the last breath when Jesus says, it is finished. Friends, I want you to know that Jesus stands with us today and because of the cross that we are not alone, that Christ stands with us at our cross. And as I turn my eyes to Jesus, my eyes are open to a whole new world and possibility. The darkness of Good Friday marks a new beginning, a new way to know and experience the love and the presence of Jesus that was never possible before. It was a break in time, and if we were to look at the cosmic calendar of Earth, it would all center on the cross of Good Friday. 
the indwelling Holy Spirit, being lifted up with eagle's wings, being given supernatural power and being restored to the way that we were meant to restore, all came out of Good Friday. While all the eyes looked upon Jesus, Jesus' eyes were turned upon each and every one of us. Therefore, when we turn upon Jesus, we look full in his wonderful face. He loves you. In John 17, we have a portion of the prayer that he prayed the night he was taken, the night he surrendered himself at Gethsemane. He prayed for his disciples, but he then prayed for the disciples of the disciples of the disciples for all those who are believers from that point forward. Jesus prayed for you when he had so many other things he could have been preoccupied with. The reality of Jesus' triumph, Jesus victorious, all you are and all you are, all you who are weary, come to me, says Jesus. Today we remember Good Friday. Today we're going to have communion, a sacrament, a blessed sacrament, holy communion. Today we're going to focus more on the broken body and the poured out lifeblood of Jesus. Sunday when we have communion, we're going to be celebrating the victory over sin and death and the triumph of good over evil. But today we're going to remember that less than 24 hours before he gave up his last breath on this earth as a human, that Jesus had the Last Supper. We read about it in John chapter 14. Jesus says, do not be troubled. Remember me. And while I'm gone from you temporarily, I'm going to prepare a place for you. I'm going to come back and be with you. I'm going to give you a Holy Spirit, my Holy Spirit, and I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And he sat with them in the upper room, not far from Caiaphas' house. And he took the bread and he broke it. And he says, when you want to remember me and you want to be encouraged, take and eat this bread because it's a remembrance that I loved you. And he lifted the cup and said, you don't yet know what's going to come, but 24 hours from now you will. And when you see my blood poured out and the blood and the water of my being being separated, remember, I love you this much, so much. Will you join with me in the Lord's Prayer? And in that, there will be a prayer of confession where we ask Jesus for our free, his forgiveness. And that will be our prayer for forgiveness. Join with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of God forever and ever. Amen. And I want you to know that before we have the Holy Sacrament, that in your confession of sin, that through the blood of Jesus, God forgives the sin of the repentant. It's the forgiveness of God that I bestow to you and declare to you from the Holy Word of God. Now I ask you where you're at, if you will carefully take off the thin layer on the top. Whoever thought we'd be doing communion like this? And take the wafer that's on the top. And be reminded, as Jesus said to his disciples, take and eat. Do this in remembrance of my body being broken for you. And then as you peel the top off the cup, with the representation of Christ's blood and the grape juice that's here, he says, Take and drink. My blood has been poured out for you. Heavenly Father, we have celebrated your life. In your death, you sacrificed. You gave yourself for us. You endured so that we might have life. And we know Sunday's coming. But today we're overcome by the 
reality of Good Friday. And God, we thank you. May we be your servants, may we be your hands and your feet, may we be empowered and dwelled and lifted up because of Good Friday. And carry us on to the victory and the triumph of Easter Sunday. In all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And will you please listen to this recording of Easter Hallelujah. And I'll say the benediction, and I would ask you then to leave quietly. And thank you for being part of this service. A crown of thorns placed on his head He knew that he would soon be dead He said, did you forget me, Father, did you? took from his head the thorny crown and wrapped him in a linen gown then laid him down to rest inside the tomb the holes in his hands his feet inside now when our went by again they came to move the stone to bless the slain with oil and spice anointing hallelujah but as they went to move the stone they saw that they were not alone for jesus christ has risen Hallelujah.
as the darkness of Good Friday descended over all the world, we keep from being overwhelmed because we know that the love of God prevailed and that victory comes on Easter Day. Lord, may you be a blessing to those that are here, meeting them wherever their need, wherever their darkness, wherever their demons rest. Good Friday dispels them and moves them on so that we can worship you in body, mind, and spirit. God, we turn our eyes to you, for you look upon us. And in all these things, may we be the hands and feet of Jesus. Help us to think and to reflect and to be between now and Sunday, and then be ready to rejoice with full joy and full gladness. In Jesus' name, amen.